It's been said that every quilt tells a story, and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. Elizabeth the Moo grew up on a farm in New Mexico and learned how to sew by making garments in 4-H. When she was in college, she had a sneaking suspicion that she could apply those skills to quilting. Elizabeth has been addicted to quilting ever since. After more than 20 years of quilting, she is still excited about the next quilt to make. Her website is a space to share with you techniques, tutorials, and patterns. She is excited to create an uplifting quilting community. Elizabeth, thank you for joining me on A Quilter's Life. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Elizabeth, I see your name is spelt with an S instead of Z. Is that on purpose? Yes. My mom, her middle name is Elizabeth, and I think it's probably a European thing. She's from Holland, so that's where it comes from. Oh, neat. Tell me about where you were born and raised. I was born in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I was raised basically right there. And my family has a farm there, a dairy farm, and I grew up climbing haystacks and playing in cottonseed and all those fun things. Wow. Do they still have the dairy farm there? They do. Share a special childhood memory. I have so many memories of sewing with my mom. And I was in 4-H growing up, and she was always my baking and sewing leader. So I would spend my weekends sewing with her, and we'd sew on the dinner table and... Every year, I would have to make a new outfit. I remember one year, I decided that I wanted to make a dress, and I picked this linen that was a plaid, and my mom was like, no, this is going to be horrible. It's going to be so hard to match the lines, but I was dead set on wanting to make it, and it really turned out beautiful, so... She was instrumental in helping me learn that I can make things and I can do it. I'm just picturing you have to line that up. (laughs) If you could do that with a plaid, you were doing great. (laughs) We had to buy a lot of extra fabric. (laughs) Besides quilting or your quilting business, do you have other employment? I do. I work for my family. I live in Tucson now, but I am still able to work for my family. I go back and forth and I'm able to stay in touch a lot better because I still work for them. So it's very nice. That's my full-time job. I call it my real job. And then this is my side hustle. And I went to school for graphic design. So that has really helped. I was able to get into the blog and I'm able to take photos and edit things and write patterns and all that really because of what I learned in school for graphic design. It does come in handy. Sometimes we don't realize where we're going to use it until years later. Definitely. So you're over in Tucson. How did you get to Tucson from Las Cruces? My husband got a job here. We had kind of been thinking about going somewhere different, and we were actually living in El Paso, which is just 40 minutes, probably less, to Las Cruces, and this was a little closer, and it's 
the same kind of weather. The desert is a lot greener here in Tucson, but we both enjoy doing things outside. And so it's the perfect weather. (laughs) Besides quilting, are there other crafts that you do or have done? I have always loved to draw. And in the past, I have done so many different crafts. I've done candles, I've done soap making and jewelry, knitting, and I've kind of like limited myself, no more crafts. And I don't really have too much time to do many other things. So I don't do very much other than quilting. I did get into indoor plants over the pandemic. I've always kind of liked them and had a few around, but I think they really add life to a home. And during the pandemic, I kind of got a few and a few more. And my husband, he enjoyed them as decor. And so that kind of gave me the green light to explode. Is there one type of plant that you tend to lean toward getting than others? Right now, I am on a Hoya kick. And my mom, her mother, brought a piece of a Hoya from Holland to her in her coat. And so my mom has grown that Hoya and given so many cuttings to so many different people throughout the years. And I have one of that plant. I actually have probably two of that plant. And then I have probably about 20 other kinds of Hoyas as well, because they're so different and so unique. It amazes me. (laughs) (laughs) Neat. How about other hobbies? I like to hike. That is probably my main hobby. I try to run, but I am definitely not very good at it. And I try to bike too, but I get lost for time. There's not enough hours in the day. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Hiking out there, there's so many nice trails out west. Oh, it is amazing. And if it's rained, then you have water right off the trail on some of the trails like you have little springs and it's just beautiful Mm -hmm. do you think your hobbies show up in your quilting at all I was thinking about that and I think maybe drawing um while quilting like free motion quilting there there could be I would think a link I was working on a leaf drawing probably at the end of last year and I quilted a charity quilt not that long ago and I based that quilting of leaves off of that drawing so I think it does a little bit I had never thought of that (laughs) did someone introduce you to quilting or did you pick it up another way I would have to say there's probably three people that inspired me to quilt I would say my mom my sister and Denise Schmidt. So my mom was doing a Bible study that was a quilting Bible study. So every time they met, they would get a block that was based off of a passage. So she had this folder full of blocks and she made my sister and my sister-in-law both baby quilts and they were absolutely beautiful. At that time, I was living with my other sister and she had started quilting as well. That really kind of pushed me to think, well, maybe I'll make something for my room. And so I went to Joanne's and I found a book and it was from Jenny Schmidt. And I had gone home and tried to find out more about her and I didn't spell her name right. So I had to go back to Joanne's and write her name out and look her up and I just love her quilts and the colors that she uses. And she's always just kind of been an inspiration. Isn't it fun to find someone like that and just really love their work? Yes, it totally, I guess, blew my mind. Like, oh my gosh, quilts can look like this. (laughs) I haven't made one that looks the same as hers, but... 
yeah, I think she does an amazing job. Neat. And whether it's one you made yourself or somebody else's, do you have a favorite quilt or a quilt pattern? I think I probably, anything with a star. I love anything with a star. So there's that. And then I have a pattern called the double pinwheel. And I really like that one. I've done it maybe three different times. And it's a free pattern. And it's probably one of the first patterns that I've made ever it's a tessellation, so it kind of has an intertwining design. So that one's probably my favorite. I like it when you do one block and it makes another design by putting them together. I do, too. I think it's so much fun, just like if you turn a block and how things can just look so differently. Yeah. So what tool are you so happy that you have? I love block lock rulers, but I think the Bernina Stitch Regulator, BSR foot, I love that foot. That's really been helpful for me while quilting. Describe that foot for me. Okay, so you plug it into your Bernina. It has like a little hoop and you unplug your presser foot so you don't use your feet at all. You're able to put your hands on the fabric and you move the fabric and that moves the needle. It's supposed to regulate the frequency of the stitch based on how fast you move the fabric. Interesting. That sounds like a fun tool. While you're quilting, do you like one part of the process more than others, or do you like each step along the way? I would have to say that I love the beginning, like when you're looking for fabric and stacking them up, seeing what works and what doesn't work, the colors, the designs. I love that part, like kind of squinting to see what something could become. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting into the fabric and, you know, like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I always get this little nervous anxiety when I'm about to cut the first cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that because you don't want to mess up, but. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're picking out your fabric, I've heard you kind of do a dark, medium, light, or some people even have it spread out about five different variations of it. Or do you go by color or how do you do that? It's different for every quilt. When I first started, I would create crazy palettes. I had a purple, green, and brown quilt, but the fabric that I based it off of was in the borders. And it was this adorable cat fabric. And I'm a total cat lady. So it worked. My sister was like, that is not going to be pretty, but it was a kaleidoscope quilt and it worked. So you can pick out the colors from a a border so you can just base it off of a fabric and I've done that many times or if you want to do solids then I would probably do like a gradient maybe but prints is fun also you can get away with doing some really nice gradients and just have a lot of that color variation mm -hmm. I love color <laughs> <laughs> I call this my fun question. Tell me about your worst quilting experience. I think I make myself go to bed after I've made a couple of errors if I'm quilting late at night because I found that they just start compiling. I was working on a swap 
mini quilt. And somehow I had printed, it was a paper piecing pattern. And somehow I had printed two different scales. So I printed one out at 100% and maybe one out at 75%. So there's no way that my pieces were going to match. And I realized this very, very late at night. And that is probably when I decided, okay, after I make two errors in a row, it's time for me to go to bed. (laughs) How far along were you in that quilt before you realized you had two different sizes? I think I was basically trying to piece them all together. So I was pretty close to finishing. It was a sewing machine. And yeah, It was not a happy moment. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you think you make quilts rather than spend your time doing something else? I love the feeling of creating something, something that nobody else will have and something that will be around for a long time. And I like seeing something in the store and thinking, I think I can make that. So I like that feeling of creating. Yeah. And compared to making clothes, I think they're not going to grow out of this. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It'll stay in trend. (laughs) And who do you make your quilts for? I make them for family and friends and I have a stitching bee that I'm part of, Do Good Harmony, and we do charity quilts. So, just about anybody. (laughs) (laughs) What are you working on right now? I am working on patterns. So, I have about six patterns that I'm hoping to get finished, written, and tested, and make the actual quilt myself and release them. So that's been my big push because I sit on things and I sit on them for so long and I just have decided I need to get more stuff out the door. So that's my goal this year is to get quite a few patterns done. Well, it's such a process creating it and then making it yourself. Do you have others that make some of them for you? I'm going to try to get somebody this time as well, but I have a lady, Cassie, in my area. She is an amazing quilter, and she's part of my quilt guild, the Modern Quilt Guild here in Tucson. Actually, she's helped me with two quilts now. So my last pattern, I wanted two different versions. So a version where the pattern is written as a gradient, and then a version where the pattern is written kind of randomly where the colors are sporadically placed. So she made one of those quilts and then I made the gradient one and I made it as like, I think it was a twin size and then she made the lap size. So that was a great help to me. And neat. It's great to have those helpers. It is so wonderful. Share a quilting tip. I would have to say done is better than perfect because when you make and when you go through the process, you learn and you can't get better and you can't get to perfection unless you actually do the work. So done is definitely better than perfect. Mm -hmm. Great tip. You have a quilting business. So How did it go from being a hobby into a business? So I guess I was working at the job I still work at now, and I was freelancing as a graphic designer for other companies, and I decided that I wanted to do something for myself. I guess my, you know, end-all goal would be to become a fabric designer, but I kind of feel like I have to be able to stand on my own feet and, you know, be able to bring in an income before I go there. So I started my blog 
I think it was back in 2012 and I definitely didn't know what I was doing and I kind of know what I'm doing now. We're always a work in progress. Definitely. <laughs> Tell me the name of your quilting business and how you came up with that name. My blog name is under Brown Bird Designs, and I love nature and birds, and I tend to like birds because my cats like birds. So I guess that kind of comes in possibly as well. Like when I lived in El Paso, we had a really nice garden, and I planted catnip under a tree. And she would stay in my yard as opposed to going all over the neighborhood, probably because of our garden and the birds. <laughs> so I have bird feeders. I have hummingbird feeders, finch feeders, golden finch. I have feeders for them. I have a quail block. So I love birds. <laughs> wow. And... I've been listening to birding podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good ones out there. There are. So when did you open Brown Bird Designs? I think it was back in 2012. So the same time that you started your blog? Yep. Okay. I'm not sure. I put this down as your questions of how did you start professionally quilting for others, but is that part of what you do? I actually just got a commission last week, so now it is. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be my first time ever, and it's a pattern called the Busy Bee Quilt, and they wanted it in, like, terracotta colors, so it'll be interesting to see how that flows. Oh, neat. So they have a picture in their mind from your pattern, right? Yeah, and I actually plugged in swatches and colors and sent them what it hopefully will look like. This is new territory for me, so I didn't want to go further. I would like to charge like half of the amount to buy the fabric and all that. So I wanted to get a clear picture to them of what it could look like and make sure that we agree on that. So. so did you use something like an EQ8 to get the swatches in there? I use Illustrator. Oh, okay. That's what I design my patterns in. Well, I was going to ask how you felt when you got your first commission, but I guess you're feeling that right now. I am. I was excited. I was really reluctant because I have quite a few things I want to do this year, but I was kind of like, I just got to say yes, might as well. <laughs> well, I did see on your website that you have it laid out on how you're going to handle that, and that looked pretty well thought out. Thank you. Tell me where we can find your business. It is on the web at Brown Bird Designs, and I also have an Etsy shop where I sell my patterns and I sell some fabric in there as well. I have a Squarespace site or a shop, I guess, and that you can get to from my website. Good. Is there anything else you wanted to share with me today? I am going to try to create a Jelly Roll Day event, and I would love to have anybody interested in going. I'm going to try to get some designers together to make some Jelly Roll patterns and have some prizes, and it'll be over Zoom, I'm picturing, but I'm in the process of putting that together, so I thought I would put that out there. Great. Now, have you had other quilt alongs? I have. I think I've done maybe three or four quilt alongs. So, the last one I did a couple of sew days on Zoom, and that was a lot of fun. That sounds like fun. And is it easy for people to sign up for those quilt alongs? 
it is. The ones that I've done in the past, you just start sewing along and then on Instagram, you post your progress. Usually the way I run a sew along is if you post your progress with the right hashtags, then that qualifies you for entering into giveaways. Oh, fun. So there's something to look forward to. Yeah. Great. Plus you get the quilt that you made. Definitely. (laughs) A new quilt is always fun. Uh Uh-huh. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I enjoyed visiting with you. Thank you for having me. This Uh was great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You can find more stories on aquilterslife.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast player so each episode will be downloaded automatically. Also, I want to hear about you and your wonderful quilts. Please contact me, Paula Chamberlain, through the website to set up an interview. And as always, thanks for listening.